The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In this week's episode, we're going to start working on the final design for the super glue gun. Ooh, that's exciting. Hey Ben, I've been on the Element 14 community and mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of good suggestions and ideas about our glue gun builds. What do you think, you wanna take a look? Yeah, why don't we take a look at those and see if any of them could apply to our final glue gun design. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. We're going to resume work on the super glue gun this week. But first, Karen thought it'd be a good idea to read some of the comments and suggestions from the community. Yeah, we got quite a few comments with feedback about our glue gun build, so let's look at what we have. Okay. From users Granger JC, Ram Garden, and Gavmo, they all thought that rather than using a servo for the stand, that it should be spring-loaded. Oh. Well, you know, I was really attached to the servo and the capacitive touch sensor. However, there are still outstanding issues. Like if we put the motor here, mm -hmm and retract the stand fully, they're going to hit each other. Yeah. So yeah, maybe some sort of mechanical stand might be the best. Like you could, it could be deployed, you push it in, and then when you're ready to deploy it again, maybe there's like a, a thumb thing, like go click and a it really pops out. Good. Yeah, yeah, that way you could still do it one-handed, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to worry about the electronics. So if we could, I would, uh, I would capitulate to that, like figuring out a way to do it spring-loaded. So the last idea came from one of our top members, Dab, and he said we should put an LED to indicate when the nozzle is hot, which I think we talked about before, but you were worried about having enough IO. No, we have enough IO. We oh, can actually okay. run like a, a, what's it called, NeoPixel type LEDs. We mm -hmm. can have it be whatever color we want. So mm -hmm. it, it could be blinking when it's heated up, then mm -hmm. turn red when it's hot, and then maybe turn orange as it's cooling down. So I've, I've been planning to do that, and we have enough IO. So. Cool. Thank you to all of our community members for all of your suggestions and ideas. Now, Ben, let's see how we can incorporate those into this week's episode. So we've got this motor along with a pancake gearbox. And originally we had it on the side like this. Then Karen was talking about having it down here, which does make more sense. But the problem with that is it's going to fatten up the handle. And we did some tests where we spread this out a little bit like that to match the um, auto stand. And it's kind of hard to get your hand around. It feels like really thick. Like, I have trouble with it, and then Karen, who has small hands, she had a lot of trouble with it. So I'm thinking I don't really want to make this any thicker, but then the problem is, if we're not going to make this any thicker, but we're going to put the motor here, then how does that work? I mean, I guess the motor could be above where your hand is, but then, then you don't have, like, flat mold lines either. Well, I guess you kind of do if you want like that. Another problem with having the motor back here is if you have an auto stand or even a manually retractable stand, it's going to go back and hit it before it goes all the way. It also caused a problem with the trigger, at least how we have it set up. See how the trigger goes into the unit and goes up to a Hall effect sensor? Well, if the motor is right here, it's going to hit the trigger. Ugh, so many problems. All right, Ben, given these suggestions from our community members, I have a proposed design change that could hopefully fix some of our issues. So we had moved the motor from being sideways to down into the handle to try to make the design more compact. Right. But you said it was getting in the way of the trigger and we figured out the that stand, it was yeah. yeah, it was in the way of the stand as well. Uh, and it was too far away from the heating element, so we would have issues with the anti-drip function because there too often the stick would be disengaged from the gear, like the stick that was actively being melted would be yeah, too disengaged. Yeah, when the sticks butt up to each other. Yeah. We kept looking at the heating elements, and the longer ones we found that fit the quarter-inch sticks uh, just had a longer like feed barrel. 
Right. So if we cut this feed barrel down to as small as possible and then got the motor, the gear on the motor as close to that as possible, then we would have the biggest percentage of active time where the right. melted glue stick is engaged and with the gear. And now you have the motor on top? Yeah, so if we have the motor on top, then it gets it out of the way of the handle. We can move it farther forward. It doesn't get in the way of the trigger. So it does add a little bit of like a knob on the top, mm -hmm. but we can, if we can figure out a way, you see I also added this yep. narrow nozzle here. So if we can figure out a way to add that to the smaller heating element, then we can still have a long, narrow end. All right, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I'll create some assemblies so we can flip the motor upside down and then I'll also make it so we can rotate the motor centered on the axis of the gun so we can get it as close as possible to the glue stick along with the bearing without going outside of the main shape of the motor. Because the motor is already pretty wide, mm -hmm. so we don't want the gun to be any wider than that than right. necessary. All right, I guess I've got some Fusion 360 work to do. Woohoo! I'm back in Fusion 360. I've flipped this motor over, which is cool and all, but I don't know. Maybe Karen's right. Maybe I should just kind of start over with this. I know what you're probably thinking is like, oh no, you're gonna start over again? The motor, this is the part that kind of is a constant. So I think what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can save it as its own thing. Let's call it uh, pancake motor. Mmm. So I think what I can do is I can go over here and I can say insert into current design. Please save this design before inserting components. Oh, okay. Glue gun mark eight. Oh man, it's never ending. It's never over. Yesterday's just a memory. Yesterday's just a memory. I don't want to think about it anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna set, see how the pivot point is not exactly center. I'm gonna set pivot and make it the center. And I'm gonna hit this to make it sure that's locked in. And now everything that we do is based off that center point. So what Karen was talking about was rotating the motor based off its center point rather than where the glue stick is centered on it. And now we can do that because we have a center point set. But we're also talking about flipping it upside down. So let's grab this. Oh look, it's got a, it's got a link symbol. It's a link to the past. Oh, my pivot point changed. Let's go in here, Roop. and let's rotate it. Oh, nope, I'm rotating the pivot point. That's, I don't want to do that. That's wrong. Set pivot point. Okay, now we can rotate the whole object upside down, just like that. Cool. So the trick here is um, rotating this to bring this in uh, clockwise so it would contact with the glue stick. So I think what I need to do is I need to redraw the glue stick at the zero, zero position in the design and then rotate the motor to match that. And then once it's in position, then I can bring in the bearing on the other side of it. I made a center point glue stick, which is represented by this long tube thing. I guess I could give it a color to make it look like a glue stick. Maybe I'll make it like white or something. Opaque matte white. Great. I also created another object, which is just a center reference point, And I use that as a joint with the motor. So if you look at it from the end view, the motor is now centered on that point. And if we click on the motor, it'll actually revolve around it as well, like a, like a planet. So now I can rotate the motor assembly with the gear and bring the gear tight up against the glue stick while still keeping the motor centered on the glue stick, which would also be centered on the gun. But I think I want to get even dorkier with this. So what I think we should probably do is actually figure out the uh, actual um, degrees to rotate this to make it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about some maths much as I hate to think about math, but sometimes you just have to do it in order to be a math lord. So what I, what the number I need is the distance from the center of the motor to the center of the shaft. Four, three, three, one. All right, let's copy that. Now the glue stick is, uh, I have that as a parameter, so we can go into modify, change parameters, and we can see that it's that. 0.2386, okay, that's our other number. So if we think about the distance from the center of the motor to the center of the gear shaft, that's uh, 0 0.4331, which would be the radius. So the diameter would be obviously twice that. And then what we really want to know is the circumference, which would be that times pi. And that gives us 2.72 blah, 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 blah. That's a really big number. All right, so that's the circumference. So what I want to do is I want to subtract the, uh, <laughs> the diameter of the gear divided by two, and then also the width of the glue stick divided by two. Confused yet? Uh, so 
Yeah, so I also need the gear diameter, which I think I have. Actually, I think I have, have that as a parameter. I mean, I guess I could eyeball this, but I don't know. I just wanna do it right. All right, so this is the glue stick diameter. Of course, really, we wanna divide this by three. So the whole reason I'm doing this is to figure out the correct number of degrees to rotate the assembly so the gear fits perfectly onto the centered glue stick. I need to do some more math. Okay, what I did was I turned the glue stick into a square. The reason I did that was so I could move around this component without it slipping over the edge of the rounded uh, glue stick. So that was pretty handy. I was able to use contact sets to do that. See, boop, boop. Of course, that would affect the uh, sketch that I just made. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, it does go over the edge of the motor, but it doesn't go over the edge on the side here. So that shouldn't affect the casing in any significant way. So I think what we should do is probably 3D print a reference of this. So I created another sketch based off the rotated version of the motor, which is that sketch right there. So let's turn off the motor and let's extrude this sketch up about 0.15 inches and that'll give us the meat to connect the motor to. Now, if you notice, I cut a hole in the back so this can slip around the bearing mount right there. Well, it should work pretty good. Now the bearing is actually, the bearing component has two parts. It has the bearing and then it has the shaft which I guess has now been connected to the uh, main part of the motor. So right here, that's where the screw is gonna be received. Now we're gonna use this, which is a, uh, a screw that has a uh, washer on it already. Um, I probably should take into account the diameter of this going into that, because otherwise we're probably gonna end up with something like this. Yeah, I don't think this is removable either. It kind of came like this. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I wanna draw this into the computer correctly. So when we 3D print it, basically we can just screw it in. But this is what it should look like. So we'll have this piece here. It'll fit over to the motor here, and that should give us a nice center point for the glue stick, keeping the glue stick as far forward as possible. And then we have a big opening here around the gear so we can remove this portion without having to undo the gear off of the shaft. All right, well, I guess we better get 3D printing. Okay, I'm gonna hook this up to the bench power supply and see if it will extrude a glue stick. Feels like we've done this a million times. I'm in some sort of matrix loop. Whoa. Well, there needs to be some sort of support ridge here, but I think it's gonna work. Seems like a good way to crush my finger. Okay, it's not quite perfect, but it definitely has the correct spacing and it moves. So what I think I'll do is I'll reprint this with a ridge on it so we can keep it level. We'll test it again. And then we can take this and redesign it into the upside down motor mount gun. Okay, so here's the inside of it. We've got the glue path. We've got the drive wheel, the idler, my jerry-rigged uh, screws here. And let's put this in place. That's weird. It's still having trouble moving. It's the same motor, what changed? So we cut the interface tube down very short to try to have the minimum distance between the heater element and the drive gear. And that didn't really work because you see we have molten glue right here, which can get in the gear, which is not good. But that does tell us something because originally the concern was when the glue stick presses against another glue stick, when you retract it, you know, you're not actually retracting the glue stick in front of it because it's not one contiguous stick. However, since it is molten this far forward, that means the, um, the point at which the glue becomes molten is actually a lot closer to the drive gear than we thought. So retracting from it isn't really that big of a deal because it's like, you know, on a 3D printer, when you track, retract the filament, you're not gonna suck the molten filament up out of the extruder, but you can reduce the pressure on it that will prevent it from basically oozing out. <sighs> yes, yeah, so the position of the drive gear relative to the loader um, is something interesting to think about, but I think that we're trying to solve a problem that doesn't really exist, because it's more about removing pressure from the extruder than actually pulling the glue back out of the extruder, because we, we can't. Okay, here is the um, auto stand itself. I ended up 3D printing it. Um, I didn't print it a very solid infill. I think it'll be good. 
Anyway, this is going to go on the underside of the gun. You can see it here on the computer, the slide stand, which is that part right there. So it's gonna pop out like this. And the intention is that it can go up to uh, about two and a quarter inches out. So I've had to go in and make sure that there's enough space in the case making it a space case. See that? Eh, like a 020 tolerance. Uh, if you design something that fits exactly, uh, basically it will uh, never work. You always have to have some amount of tolerance, especially when you're dealing with these 3D printers, which aren't the most accurate things on the planet. Uh, you can get away with it when you do like laser cut stuff, but that's because the laser kind of creates a, a burn curve. If you look there, we have a spring post there, which is right there, and then we have another one here. So the distance between those two is the expansion of the spring plus the default length of the spring. So the spring is this long to start. We have to take that into account and then also add how much travel we want, which is 2.25 inches. There's also a little bit of a, a slope on the front of this. You can see it here, IRL as well. And uh, the idea with that is when that's extended, that slope should match like this. So the bottom of it and the bottom of the handle should both be on the plane. So it sits flat. All right, so what I'm gonna do before I go on is I'm going to uh, print out this part of the case. So I'm just gonna drop this into Simplify 3D, which is my go-to slicer. Fun fact in Simplify 3D, control L, and then tap on a polygon, boom, it puts it onto the surface like that. Cool, oh man, I hope this doesn't, doesn't take too long to print. You know what I could do? I could chop the top of it off <laughs> because I don't actually need that for my test. That could save me some print time. I should be able to print this and then test to see if the spring mechanism works. And then if it does, I can proceed with the rest of the design. All right, let's try this out. Obviously we only have one half of the case. I'll just kind of hold my finger here to keep things in line. Yeah. This will be spring loaded. Here we go, and wham! wham! Comes in, pushes down the spring, and resets. Well, it's not mechanized, but it does work. And we have our motor assembly, which has a cap. So this is basically a self-contained extrusion unit, right? This will fit, I think it's right about here. <laughs> it looks kind of big, it looks like a grain silo. So the idea is there'll be a subtraction here. This will fit into it as its own little module. Then you'll snake the wires down the back. And then uh, when you put the other side of this case on, those two sides will catch this in place and hold it where it needs to be. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think we're on the right track. We just have to do more design work in Autodesk Fusion 360. That's all we have for today, but it feels like we've made some pretty good progress with the final design of the glue gun. Yes, the end is in sight. It's like right there. Maybe we only have one more episode on this? Yeah, I'm thinking in a future episode, one more episode of this project, we can get it completely designed and I have a full prototype that we can pick up pull the trigger and glue will come out and then we can evaluate it for possible production down the road. And once the glue gun's done, then we'll have the time to do some other cool projects. Yeah. So what do you think about the glue gun project so far? Do you need delicate glue gun extrusion or maximum heavy duty glue gun extrusion? Tell us about it on the Super Glue Gun subspace on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. Stick around because glue? That's still funny. Ha <laughs> ha. And we'll see you next time. In today's episode, we're going to do the final design, 3D printing, and assembly of the parts to create the super glue gun. Dear lefties, we feel bad because the world was not designed for you. Also, you statistically have a shorter lifespan. That's why we designed our super glue gun for your needs. This is like one of those things where they cut open a cow and they show you its guts at like the fair. So glad I learned cursive in grade school so I could write beautiful hand-drawn letters.